So today I'm going to present uh, the paper that me and my teacher, Yuzun, wrote on the an algorithm adaptive source code converter to automate the translation from Python to Java. So here, let's go to the abstract. There's as nearly as many program languages in, the, in this world as human language, but the conversion between uh, these languages of computers are still a developed field. There are comprehensive translations between all human languages, but there aren't any, uh, are, are, are many for programming languages. The solution to this problem is hitting the coding itself. We, we need the algorithm to be built to convert the source code of one language to another language. This paper examines the accuracy of a converter that my team had built over the month for the translation of the coding language from Python to Java. We choose these two languages because, uh, just, just like you have uh, already said, they are powerful language and they are popular language that's been used by many people around the world. Okay, so the paper was structured like this. Uh, first, we have an introduction, and then I'm going to explain the challenges I faced uh, while building this, uh, this algorithm of the converter. And then I'm going to be explaining the uh, what the actual details of the algorithm is. Uh, after that, there's going to be two experiments conducted on the uh, to determine the accuracy and the correctness of the algorithm. And we have a, a conclusion after that. And in the end, I'm going to open up the converter and do a demonstration of how, how it actually works with a, with a chunk of Python code. Okay, so. The converter is a tool that we built to convert the Python source code into Java source code, which has the exact same function features, not losing any abstraction. Existing approach to this problem of cross-programming language transpilation includes Google's Web Toolkit, which is GWT. It, it, it turns into Java to JavaScript, and to Facebook's Hip Hop compiler compiles PHP into C. Our compiler. Uh, definitely uh, cannot do as, power, uh, as powerful as these two uh, approaches of the tech giants. But however, it's on the, uh, the same direction as those two approach. Possible usage of the converter includes situations where more than one language version of a program is needed, either in work or in education. But in education, I mean, so for uh, like learners starting to learn one language and another, uh, and like they know language, uh, they, they, they know one of the language, they can use this con converter to, to aid their study of the other language and they can convert the programs in between languages. Okay, so before actually to talking about uh, how the program works, I'm going to talk about the uh, some challenges I have faced. So one fundamental difference between the language of Java and Python is that like a Python list is a modifiable type, uh, is have a modifiable type and links. Meanwhile, Java has two similar structures, array and array list, both not fitting with both of the property that the Python list have. Our converter have a choose to use the Java arrays as the correspondent of the Python list. To solve the, the fixed data type that uh, 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 Java arrays have, the types of the arrays are declared as object. However, uh, However, this creates a more complicated problem because um, this, uh, uh, this, this method, uh, uh, the casting of the elements uh, as object in the array list to their designated data type whenever they're used, that problem arose when we uh, use this method to, to convert this challenge. So as can be seen, the bottom line shows how a standard uh, list and an array list will be created. So if we see like a list is going to be created in a Python code on the left, we're going to do uh, something, uh, uh, the converter is going to write the Java line into the Java OPL file. Okay, next, variables. Python syntax generally disregards data types. However, Java syntax, uh, syntax is strict with data types. Once a new variable is declared, it needs a required fixed data type. Our algorithm keeps track of every variable in the Python source code created, both the variable name and its value. If the variable name is not rec recorded, then it launches a sort of complicated casework to categorize the value of a variable and grants a corresponding Java variable to the proper type. For example, if I wanna store like a number inside a variable called A, the, uh, 
when the converter sees this, it's going to uh, change that to the Java correspondent of an integer a created that stores the value of one. Uh, this also includes uh, the special case of initializing an array list, just like what I talked about before. With this method, the algorithm is able to cast the elements with the type objects in the array list once they're needed to be accessed. Uh, since casting an object to uh, an actual data type, uh, so uh, the, the Java code will not lose any uh, correctness. And then there's a third challenge uh, uh, lies within the functions, or you can say method of uh, the two, prog uh, two programming languages. Each programming language has its own libraries and functions. The number of dependencies is complex and it's increasing every day. It's just impossible to uh, create all those uh, dependencies into the converter. But however, our converter did not solve this challenge, but offers a fairly clean, uh, like an optimization fix to the problem. Find the matching pair of functions. For example, host language contains a, a math library that, that can call function to do mathematical operations. The Python POWAB is the same thing as Java's math.POWAB. Uh, uh, these functions are both doing uh, the exponents of a uh, of b over a. Therefore, our converter contains a dictionary of corresponding functions. It's easy to add a dictionary if a new matching pair of functions. So the, the dictionary contains the uh, matching pair pairs of functions. So whenever, whenever one of the the Python function is identified in the Python input code, uh, the uh, the converter is going to choose the corresponding a Java function to write in the, the output file. Okay, and then going on to what the, uh, how the algorithm actually works. The converter itself is an algorithm coded in Python. It functions like a line by line enumeration method using massive if and else statement to case out each of the section of the input file Python source code. It, it uses string parsing to identify certain structures in the code and convert it to Java code. Besides this line line by line process, there is certain information that's meaningful to the entirety of the code, such as variables and functions used throughout the code. So th these are not just local variables used in a certain line or a certain section. If there's universal variables used throughout the code, the converter needs to keep in track of them. The algorithm observes variables and functions when they are first created and saves them with their parameters and types for later use. Reading one Python line, writing one Java line after all Python code is converted, uh, the, the Java code is outputted as Java file. So that the, these special structures uh, or the parts of the Python source code that I, thought, I talk about uh, can be, uh, some of them can be listed over here. So calling and creating methods, conditional, which is if and else statements, casting variables, for loop and well loop, and just basically the creation and using of variables. And Python list, and there's other edge cases that are commonly used in Python input file. Let's see. Okay, here is an uh, image and over uh, goes through the overall uh, uh, procedure uh, of the uh, of the algorithm that we have built. So first, as can be seen over here, uh, the Python file, uh, after the converter receives the, the input of Python file, it takes one single Python line at a time and goes through this process of seeing if it's a function, uh, if it's uh, dealing with a function, or if it's a, a conditional, or if it's casting variable types, or, or it's transversion, which means for loop and the loop or other kinds of loops, or it's creating or updating variables, or it could be list uh, converting list from array list, or there could, could be just more edge cases of, for example, uh, uh, there's special function things, and then there's reading and writing files. So uh, the converter will identify special keywords to see if this line of Python code fits in any of these categories. And then if, if so, it's going to uh, convert each part of the uh, this Python line until it actually ending up with a single Java line. So, and after that, it's going to wrap up, wrap up this current uh, Python line with uh, Java, uh, Java syntax using the special characters. And then it's going to be written into the Java uh, output source file. Along this process, there's going to be uh, this part and this part 
looking at the universal things we were seeing, uh, so not just local, to this Python line. For example, the memory type, uh, the variable and type memory things. Okay, so uh, after finishing, uh, after finishing our algorithm, we did two experiments to test the correctness of uh, uh, of our, our algorithm. So first, the converter it takes in Python code and converts it line by line to Java code in order to determine the correctness of the translate code. We designed an experiment using Python code uh, from the uh, examples of United States uh, of America computer source uh, computer science Olympia questions. The USACO is a competition consisting of coding problems of different difficult difficulties about an algorithm, and uh, the different numbers of test cases are required to pass each question. We first randomly selected the five problems from the USACO competition two bronze level and two silver level, which is the more advanced level. And then uh, load the Python solutions for each of them, which successfully passed the case. And then uh, put the, a, uh, the five Python source code into the converter one by one to generate five corresponding translation uh, uh, that's written in Java of the code. Therefore, uh, since the, the converter uh, cannot produce a 100% perfect a translation uh, from Python to Java, we are able to count the number of characters that's needed to be manually fixed in the Java source code that's being outputted by the converter before the code executed with no trouble. We can see uh, the uh, uh, when the program actually uh, when the Java code actually executes with no uh, no trouble, it passes uh, if it's past the uh, USACO problem. We can see that it has the exact function as the Python code, since the USAC will look for uh, if the if this program can output a specific uh, numbers or strings. So therefore, if the the, the USAC testing uh, website graded pass for both the original Java and the outputted or original Python and the outputted Java, this means that uh, those two uh, file uh, before and after translation have nearly the same uh, exact function. So, uh, and when we manually cal calculated the change characters over the total characters within, uh, uh, within this programming file, this number indicates the correctness or the accuracy of the translated code. So uh, the premise will be the, uh, that uh, our program is able to pass uh, all the five, uh, all the three bronze problems and the two silver problems. So here I have, I have a data table showing the actual result of this experiment. So I have eight, uh, I mean five uh, Python programs. And then after I convert them into Java, they're able to pass the, the quick question that asks for the, this algorithm. So pass, 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 pass for bronze, bronze, and three silvers. And then the correctness, as can be seen, the change, uh, the arrow, can be seen from the changed characters over the total characters. So therefore, these are the non-perfect part based the translation. So the first program, the error rate was 8.6%. So this is about 8.6% of the code within the entire program that need to be manually changed. And the second one is 3.2. The third one is 11.7. The fourth one is 10.3. The fifth one is 12.5%. So on average, uh, the uh, the accuracy will be 100% minus the error rate, which is 9.26%. So that will be about 90, 91%. The percentage on the left indicated the ratio that's manually fixed in the converted code due to unavoidable syntax and logical errors. Until the code is executed with some mistake, the measurement of the correctness of the translation process, the average percentage is about 91%. Okay. So uh, since that after fixing uh, manually fixing the code, the experiment uh, demonstrates that it works just as fine as the original Python code by seeing uh, it passes the USAO, USACO problem. So uh, therefore, uh, the, the, the conclusion can be drawn for this experiment is that uh, the, the, the Python code in this field of uh, algorithm building, so after fixing about 9% of the converted Java code, it will have the exact same function of the original Python code using our converter. Okay, we on to the next experiment, 
uh, which measures the adaptability to different users. So experiment one uses Python uh, code inputs from only one coder, who's the, the builder of this computer, which is me. However, different coders have different coding habits, which could influence the, the accuracy of the converter. To test the effectiveness of this converter on different coders, we gather 10 Python code samples from 10 different coders. Uh, uh, the links of those programs range from 10 lines to 200 lines. And you use the converter to transpile it into Java code. Analysis done on the 10 outputs are shown below. So as can be seen in the, uh, in the first data table, we use the same method uh, as the experiment one, the number of add characters that did not get converted successfully out of the total characters. So which means the percentage of error. As can be seen, for different coders, the percentage of the error of translation fluctuates between 2% and 9%. Thus, we can successfully see that the converter have a good adaptability to different coders. However, more question remains. Could, could the length of the code be an issue? Would, there, uh, would the converter be less effective if the code is longer? To answer this, a graph of a percentage of error versus total characters is con constructed showing there's no obvious correlation between the length of the code and the correctness of translation. Th th this means is that when the uh, length of the code increase, so it's like a longer program with more lines, uh, the, the accuracy of this converter did not increase or, in, or decrease. It's kind of still it's staying in this range of 2% to 9%. So the converter has 2% to 9% error rate in the translation of Python to Java code, depending on the coder, the coder's coding habits, and the length of the input file. So the goal of the two above experiments to, pr to prove the trustability of this converter in terms of measuring its correctness of translation and adaptability to various kinds of inputs. Uh, after this uh, this experiment, we can say that uh, uh, overall the error rate never exceeds two percent of the entire code piece. So thus, the converter is trustable with a translation of a uh, rate of more than ninety percent under any situation. Okay. Uh, before heading to the conclusion, actually, I'm going to explain some of the uh, some of the related works. Uh, 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 of uh, that's similar to the things that, that we've done. So uh, th there's a paper uh, written by Law Trucks that represents the programming uh, code translator using machine learning. This selected a uh, number of source code from GitHub uh, uh, and trained a machine learning model to automatically translate the program from one language to another. Also, machine learning allows a more automated approach to, the, to, the, to perform the translation it cannot capture all the possibility of the rules. And there's always an accuracy issue. Our, our work is totally based on the, the rules of, of the coding. So therefore we have a more real, reliable foundation to guarantee the accuracy. In addition, our, uh, our converter is specifically focused on Java to Python translation in order to improve the accuracy. Well, their work packages a more generous, uh, generalized language translation. And then there's another paper <coughs> There's another paper written by uh, Abizain, which demonstrates their version of an interlanguage translation from Python to Java. It is a, an algorithm that translates from, from source to source, and it uses machine learning to correct the translation wherever the accuracy is lower than 60%. This algorithm is able to uh, conduct back and forth translation, which means it can perform both Python to Java and Java to Python translation. Also, this method does have a more general use and but however, the, res, re, the reliance on machine learning to fix the, accu the low accuracy of the translation shows the inst instability of the tra translation. Our work focuses on more only handwriting uh, algorithm that involves no AI, which generates a more st stable accuracy without worrying about the translation uh, from Java to Python, so, because our own focus is on Python to Java. And then uh, there's a third paper written by Agri Rawal, that, that had constructed a tool to convert uh, Python codes into the higher version of Python 3, uh, to convert Python 2 codes into Python 3. He uses statistical machine translation, which is a technique using natural language translation too. This scores for evaluating the accuracy uh, is as high as 99.37%. Uh, this conversion of a code from a previous version to a newer version of the same coding language looks similar uh, to, uh, to cross-language translation, but they're fundamentally different. 
while the converter is doing a task from Python to Java translation, similar to the challenge it exists in the analysis of Python source code, are also mentioned in Al Guavo's article. However, our work can, uh, cannot uh, achieve a higher accuracy due to the other challenges uh, uh, in the course of cross-language translation. But this is this is fundamentally different from an uh, inter-language translation from a lower version to a longer version. Okay. In conclusion, uh, in, in this paper, we present the converter we built for the task of cross-language translation among the program language, more specifically from the wide use language of Python to Java. Our converter takes in Python source code and opens Java source code as close as our original code. Our converter is an algorithm handcrafted in Python. And the, philosoph the, the philosophy behind the algorithm is that it uses enumeration, which means it tests out that every possible structure contains in a Python code. The translation process is done line by line, with the algorithm detecting certain structures in the Python code and turning each piece into a corresponding Java version. The accuracy of our converter is about 90%. Uh, without considering the involvement of Python dependencies in the input. This is supported by the two experiments we have conducted. The first one covers, uh, uses, uses the converter on five USACO pro programming language, and then the, uh, I mean, programming problems. And then the Java translation have about 9% of error rate compared to the original Python uh, uh, solution. The second experiment tested the converter on, on code's input from 10 different users. And as well as the very length, the accuracy fluctuates between 92% to 98%. So uh, uh, some of the future things that our team have designated to work on is that first is the accuracy. Also, the full accuracies in the translation for Python to Java is an idealistic task that cannot be achieved with the enumeration method we have been implemented. The, cur the current accuracy at roughly about 92% is definitely not the upper limit. We could de definitely go into uh, the details of our algorithm and, tr and try to uh, improve this accuracy. And then uh, the, the next category uh, that we are uh, planning to improve is the accessibility to, to the public. The goal of building this converter is never about keeping it to ourselves. Instead, it should be a tool benefiting the public. In the current moment, it's still uh, it's still just a piece of de developing code. We will work on this to make this more accessible to everyone. Currently, it's in uh, it's being published as an uh, web application that everyone can use. And then third, we can definitely have uh, uh, in the future to build an error detection system. So since the converter will encounter parts of the code within within the uh, Python source code, it cannot convert it to Java. It, then it will be reasonable to have a feature of the to labeling those parts in the code uh, of, of the Java output source code to notify the user that uh, these are the limitations of the coverage. Our team will continue to work on this modifying of the algorithm to improve the accuracies of the converter and add uh, the error detection system. So thus, it will be ready and uh, as a convenient tool to open to the public. We will publish it as a web application. Anyone can go to the domain name and then use our tool for their own purposes. Okay, and next I'm going to do a demonstration by clicking on the link. So the source code I'm going to be inputting is uh, one uh, is part of the US Excel problem that I have cut it out. To, uh, I can keep it short to uh, just save time on this comment, uh, presentation. We have to keep this converter in an online IDE, which uh, allows the user to have a domain for their program. So probably it's going to take a bit of time to let the algorithm actually take the function. Okay, so here, uh, when I uh, copy and paste the uh, Python code in here, after I click this one convert, you can see that the, the Java version of this Python code are offered line by line. So, uh, first, it will definitely do an input of the java.io uh, and java.util uh, because uh, uh, we, we just uh, automatically default that the uh, in, inside the, the Java output, output is going to be function needed for those, those two widely used libraries that's, in, that's encoded within the Java. So we just input it whenever they're needed. And then there's uh, reading the file in, inside the Java. Therefore, we use like a similar structure 
and that's the reads a file in in, a, in Java. This is Python and it's Java. And then they're setting up variables and using the array list, which we have uh, uh, over here. And then uh, there's also uh, setting up the uh, alt file. And then there's we can see there's a loop structure over here, a loop. And then there's a, a nested loop structure over here. And then uh, after the, the program's finished, the just that it's over here, there's alt file writes, which it's the same thing in Java. Okay, let me stop my share. And then that's the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you, thank you everyone for listening to our conversation.